Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mike Baltos from Orderflows, and you know, welcome to a new year. I'll get started here in about uh, a few seconds, just going through some last-minute checks, making sure everyone can see my screen okay, and my sound is working fine. So again, you know, I just want to thank everybody for coming out on this uh, third day of the new year, sort of the day where you know everyone's really sort of back in the, um, you know, sort of in back in the saddle, back in the work mode, and same thing with the markets, right? We are finally open after this long holiday and everyone's sort of back at their trading desks and ready to go. So I'll get started here. Today, I'm going to be talking about uncovering hidden trading opportunities with order flow analysis. Now, you know, order flow is a tool that helps traders understand really what's happening in the market. And, you know, that's important because, you know, a lot of traders, they just focus on price and price alone. And, you know, sometimes that's just not enough to to really go on. You don't understand the intensity of a move, whether it's getting stronger or getting weaker. And today I'm going to explain you know, how you could use order flow to help sort of decode some of that information that you're seeing on the chart. So, you know, basically three things I'll be covering to, in today's presentation. The first one is, I'm going to talk about some of the advanced order flow analysis techniques for 2023. You know, it's a new year. It's a time to, you know, sort of take stock and expand on what you already know in the markets. Uh, second thing I'll cover is uh, leveraging the order flow to maximize your trade results. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you want to get as much as you can out of the markets. And, you know, that's the whole point of trading is to take advantage of what you're seeing in the markets to make money. Right? We, we don't trade the markets to lose money or give away our money. You know, we, we approach the markets because, you know, we want to earn money from the markets. And lastly, I want to show you how to, you know, take what, you, even though it says the same thing there, um, it, it's the, the third point is I'm going to show you how to sort of put it all together in the analysis, right, so that you can become a better trader. Now, professional traders have been using order flow trading strategies for years to help them maximize profits and minimize losses. And today I'm delighted to share with you some of these strategies that I learned from my over 20 years uh, trading on institutional trading desks. You know, strategies are relatively unknown outside of the institutional world. And nowadays, you know, what's great about the markets is now everyday retail traders, right? You and me, I consider myself now a retail trader, can take advantage of you know the hidden order flows that's taking place in the market. And this insight while we're sharing with you today may at first glance seem complex and intimidating, especially if you're new to order flow and you don't really understand what you're looking at. But with careful study and plenty of practice, taking advantage of the order flow is both possible and achievable. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now, but first, you know, for those of you that are new to one of my presentations, you know, thank you for taking the time out of your day to come. But I just want to explain who I am and where my experience comes from. Now, I've got over 20 years of institutional trading experience. You know, I started on the CME trading floor, literally at the bottom of the industry as a runner with Dean Witter. You know, then eventually I started working my way up. And while I was still with Dean Witter, I left the trading floor to work on the electronic trading desk, right? When the electronic ex uh, trading really started taking off with the exchanges, right? CME had the Globex, uh, Board of Trade had Project A, NYMEX, COMEX had Access. And, you know, it was back in those early 90s when electronic trading was just starting out and you know, I saw it as a great opportunity. You know, I didn't realize that one day it would just take over the world pretty quick. I mean, it, it was really just a matter of about five years that it really shifted from the floor to going fully electronic. After Dean Witter joined EDF Man, the big commodity trading firm out of England, right? They've been around since the 1700s. I worked there for almost two years on their global macro trading desk where, you know, we traded pretty much every commodity futures product possible in the world. After EF Man, I joined Commerce Bank when the big German banks, you know, dominated the, the markets. This is sort of in the time, sort of right when the Euro was starting up and, you know, the big German banks were dominating um, Europe in terms of trading volumes. And I was the licensed Eurex trader there for three years. And I traded, you know, all everything on on the yield curve against the U.S. markets, you know, Bunds, Bobble, Shats against twos, tens, fives, and and the 30-year bonds, as well as DAX against E-minis. 
and you know Eurostox also against the minis. After Commerce Bank, I joined Cargo, the big American trading firm. Um, you know, it's one of the largest privately held companies in the world. If it was publicly held, it would probably rank second or third in the United States. And again, there, you know, we traded every possible futures contract in the world. And I spent four years there. They sent me out to Singapore to set up a trading desk when the Singapore exchange was closing. And they needed to go have an electronic trading desk there in Singapore. So I left Chicago to go work in Singapore. After setting up that trading desk, after about a year, I left. And eventually I joined JP Morgan in Singapore as vice president of futures trading. I spent eight years there on the trading desk. Now, all these jobs were actual trading desks, trading electronically. And so, you know, I've learned how to use the dome. I've heard, learned how to read the depth of the market, resting liquidity, all that stuff at a time when it was brand new to a lot of people. And I've had the very good fortune of working with others that were also very good traders. And, you know, we share our knowledge and, you know, it's from there that I sort of grew into this, you know, order flow trading expert. I wrote a book on trading order flow. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you how to get a copy of that book. But what's most important is I'm one of only a handful of traders, former institutional traders who have mastered both trading order flow and teaching it to retail traders all over the world. So get ready as I'm about to share with you some of my most valuable methods of order flow analysis that's going to help you become a more successful trader. So I want to take you and show you the exact steps you need to follow to start immediately taking advantage of that institutional order flow that's taking place in the markets every trading day. Now, before we begin, you know, a brief disclaimer. I do want you to understand trading does involve risks and there are risks involved in trading. You should only trade with money you could afford to lose or money that you don't require to live off of. You know, sometimes I see people, it's almost like they have a race against time. Like, oh, Mike, you know, I, I lost my job. I've never traded before, but I want to become a trader. Can you teach me how to become a trader in a month before my money runs out and I got to get a job? Well, you know, you're not putting yourself in a good position for success, right? And, and that's not how you should approach, approach trading. It just says anything in life, you know, trading is a profession for a lot of people and they spend a lot of time learning how to trade effectively. So it's, you know, there are some people that just pick it up like a fish to water. But for the majority of people, you know, being successful at anything in life takes work. So the first thing I'll talk about is advanced order flow analysis techniques for 2023, right? It's a new year and advanced order flow analysis techniques are going to be more important than ever as the markets become increasingly more complex and global. Now, recent advancements in things like artificial intelligence-based technologies have enhanced the ability to interpret order flow patterns, while market microstructure theory has illuminated trade execution mechanics and informed strategies on where order flow originates from. Now, that's a lot of words, you know, word salad, but, you know, when you're looking at the order flow, right, in the past, people would just look at a simple order flow footprint chart such as this. And, you know, they'd have information like the delta, the cumulative delta, the volume. And, you know, people would have access to things like max delta and min delta. But a lot of people never really used it because they never really understood what it means. And today I'm going to get into that internal delta, so to speak, right? The max delta, the min delta, and its relationship to what's actually taking place in the bar. So max delta will often appear you know, on the bottom of your chart, underneath your normal delta, it'll say max delta, min delta. Max delta is how strong delta was in a bar, the strongest it was. Min delta is the opposite, how strong it was negative delta. What that means is positive delta is the aggressive buying taking place. Negative delta is the aggressive selling taking place. Okay, so, you know, the market's trade in a two-way auction, and there's a bid, there's an offer. So if someone bid, um, buys the offer, right, that registers as positive one on the delta. If someone sells at the market and sells into the bid, that registers as minus one delta because you have an aggressive seller. Now, what max delta does is it gives you the value of how sort of the, the peak of the aggressive buying, how strong it was. So when you see a number like, you know, 25 on 
the max delta t tells you at one point the strongest the aggressive buyers were in that par was 25 contracts more than the aggressive selling right if you see a volume of you know 1285 that tells you that there was 1285 at one point 1285 more aggressive buyers than sellers in the bar now the min delta is kind of the opposite it tells you how strong aggressive sellers were so if you see a min delta of minus 18 it's going to tell you that there was the strongest the aggressive sign was in the bar was just minus 18 contracts meaning there was 18 more aggressive sellers than buyers which is not very strong but if you have a number like you know minus 12 02 1202 as your min delta that tells you that it was you know 1202 more aggressive sellers than buyers at one point in that bar so that's information that you can use and analyze okay it's a data point and this is e-minis this is on you know, the last trading day of the year when we made that low 38 21 and a half and we started moving up but as we came down into this low there was something interesting happening internally in the deltas the max deltas the min deltas and where the final delta ended and what you're seeing is on the new low here at 38.21 and a half right we had positive delta but positive delta was 12.68 now if you're just looking at delta you know how people would analyze it in the past is oh you got a new low you got positive delta that's a bullish sign okay well earlier you had a new low here with positive delta uh, the market still made a new low okay so just taking the delta by itself is okay but you really want to sort of take a look at how the delta was formed all right, so we look at this bar the first time we hit the low, it's got a delta of 75, but it's got a min delta of minus 400, a max delta of 88. So, okay, I mean, we, we you know, there was aggressive buying in the bar, obviously, you got the positive delta. There was more aggressive selling in the bar, obviously, minus 411 on the min delta. But we ended up with kind of a smallish delta. Okay, again, you know, just because you have a positive delta doesn't mean it's an automatic buy. You want something that, that's going to give you more of a reason to potentially get long off of a low. So we sold off. We made a new low by, you know, almost four or five points. And on our new low here, okay, now we got, again, positive delta. And if we take a little step further, take a look at what's happened in the bar. Well, in this bar, there's very little net aggressive selling. It was just minus 18, which tells me that there wasn't much aggressive selling anymore after this big sharp move down. Okay, but more importantly, now we start looking at the relationship to max delta and final delta. Max delta was 1285, final delta was 1268. Okay, and what's different between this bar and the previous low is this colored magenta right i like to use colors because you know i'm very visual um, when you're looking at the order flow 1260 is telling me it's closing within a certain percentage it's 95 percent of the max delta the final delta is closing so if it's magenta it's telling me it's very strong we're closing it right near our strongest max delta level which is going to be bullish right so you're at your low of the day you have a very strong delta in the sense of where it's closing relative to its max delta same thing in the next bar very strong positive delta 615 the max delta was 621 so we're closing within the 95th percentile of its max delta which is indicating you know it's, it's a strong sign and you can see how the market reacted earlier we didn't quite get in that area you know 75 against 88 and the market made a new low. Now I know some people are gonna say, but Mike, what about this red candle here? It's got a strong negative delta, right? It's magenta. If it was strong positive, it would be the cyan color. If it was strong negative, it would be this magenta color. Well, the market's selling off, right? And as the market is selling off, you expect to see 
negative deltas. You expect to see strong negative deltas as well. So coming into a low to see a strong negative delta is something that you expect to see. However, we make a new low and I see strong positive delta, right? What is positive delta? It's a sign of aggressive buying. So you're at your low. What do you think is going to be more important? Strong aggressive selling or strong aggressive buying? Well, you already know the market's been selling off. You expect to see that strong aggressive selling taking place. But when you see strong aggressive buying taking place at the low, you know, that's your cue. That's your sign. The market is just screaming to you, hey, you know what? You should be getting long here. We're, we're at the low, but now we're attracting buyers, but not just buyers. We're attracting strong, aggressive buyers coming in. And the market put in a nice rally after that. And this is, again, you know, just sort of to point it out, here's the market that is selling off, right? And you see, it's just the negative deltas, right? And when you do have some positive delta bars coming in, it's not strong, right? It's not, it's just, okay, you know, maybe some people are taking profits. You know, oftentimes that's what you see after a strong move down is profit taking. People coming in and covering their shorts. But that's the difference between this low and this low. People are probably taking some profits in here. But this one, people are saying, hey, you know what? This move is over exaggerated. They're coming in and they're being aggressive and coming out in full force. All right. And again, as this move is going down, you're seeing the strong negative deltas, right? The magenta color, magenta color. Right. And when you do get the positive deltas, it's just normal delta. Okay, so this is 10 years. Now, this is a five minute chart. And the same concepts would apply whether you're trading 10 years, crude oil, gold, e minis, MES, NASDAQ, Dow, corn, wheat. You're really looking at a lot of the same things in the order flow. So here's a market, right? This is 10 years. Came down, made a new low, and is just going sideways. And then it starts, then it gets a little pop here. Well, Okay, you got the big push down, a nice strong negative delta going sideways, sort of making another little push down to the low here at 16 and a half. We get down to 18, got a strong negative delta, minus 31.68. You know, the, the min delta is minus 3200. It's magenta color. Okay, I don't really need to focus too much on the individual numbers just because I'm, I'm focusing on the colors of the delta. Is that that's telling me it's within a certain percentage, okay? Because when you're dealing in percentages, you don't necessarily need to know the actual numbers themselves. So what what do we know? We're at the low. We had some strong selling initially, and then we just sort of go sideways. We get a potential another push down with some strong selling, but we can't even take out that low of the bar with the strong selling, and we just go sideways. Now I see one bar with strong aggressive buying. Okay, it's not at the low, but it's off of the low. It's coming in just a few ticks off the low. Maybe you're not convinced here. Okay, you wait. And then another bar comes in, strong aggressive buying. Again, you see the delta is colored cyan. Right, and later I'm going to talk about, well, I can talk about it now here, the delta divided by volume. One of the things that we've learned in order flow over you know, the last several years that we've put into the software is when I have, not only do I have a strong delta in terms of max min ratio, but when I have a, the delta as a certain percentage of the volume, right? When it's over a certain percentage, that's actually also bullish, right? So in this case, we have the delta of 1347 divided into the volume 3559 that's 37%, right? That's a bullish reading. Okay? Just as over here you had a bearish reading of 32%. So not only do I have the delta itself being bullish, but I have the delta volume also being bullish. Okay? Now this market is starting to tick higher. This bar ticks one tick higher. Remember here you had a bullet a bearish bar but the market doesn't even go any lower, right? That's a sign that maybe the selling is, is done with for now. And we're starting to see that aggressive buying coming in. A similar bar here, strong final delta and strong delta volume. 
and the market sort of just grinds its way up and up, right? This is 10 years. 10 years, you know, don't always make these big, fantastic moves the way um, other markets do. It's a grinding market oftentimes. Okay, so this is bonds. Okay, so we're selling off, right? Making new lows, making new lows. You're looking for a sign of potential. Um, this market is finally going to move away from this low. You know, you got a green bar here, got a green bar here, but the market doesn't go anywhere. Now this bar, again, it looked potentially like maybe there's aggressive buying. We're closing our final delta at 439, which is what our max delta was. So it's colored cyan, which is a good sign. But again, you need to see follow through in the next bar. The next bar doesn't even go any higher. Now it's running into a resistance area where you had that stack selling imbalance. So that's not a good sign if you're looking for this market to go up. But at least I got this one bullish bar. Maybe this market can start to rally. The fact that the next bar doesn't even tick one tick higher is not a good sign. I don't get long just because I see a bullish delta by itself. What I want to see is some follow through in the market. Right? I want to see the market start to move a little bit higher over at least the next bar or the bar afterwards. I like to give it at least two bars maximum because um, it might not happen on the immediate bar but at least by the next bar it should be moving higher you make that new low okay and then it starts going sideways drifting a little bit up so we made a new low here at 8 uh, 15 8 20 we tag that low again now here we're starting to move higher what do i see on the delta volume, it's quite high. So even though I don't have a final delta that's cyan color, that's a strong delta, I do have the delta volume being very strong, 44%, right? So close to half of that bar's volume is positive delta, 44% is, which is a very strong reading. I mean, normally it's gonna be somewhere between, you know, five to 15%. Then when you start seeing numbers, you know, 44%, that's quite strong, especially off of the low. Then the next bar doesn't go any higher, just goes inside, and then it pops in this bar here. And when this bar pops, not only that, you have a nice strong final delta, 623. And that's at what your max delta was, 623. So it's closing right on its max delta. And the market works its way up. So how can it help you? Is again, you know, on markets moving up. You're sort of you're expecting to see strong deltas, okay? That's what you expect to see. But when markets sort of top out and are starting to go sideways after a move up, you got to start looking for reasons, you know, signs of weakness in the market, okay? Because that's what's going to give you a sign that maybe this market is going to start to sell off. And after we make that move up, this is going sideways, and then we start dropping it. But as we start going down, right in this bar. The delta volume, minus 28. The final delta is minus 495, or sorry, 491. The min delta is minus 495. So not only do I have strong negative delta that's closing near our min delta, but I also got strong delta divided by volume. Okay. Now, another thing that we did also is we highlight when the max or min delta is very small okay so also that's why you see a zero right this white color area this white color um you know max delta is here it's telling me there was at no point in this bar by it being zero that aggressive sellers were ever in control so what do i have i, I market went up market's going sideways it's starting to break and as it starts to break it's just all aggressive selling essentially no aggressive buying, right? Because the bar was never had a positive delta at all, zero. The delta volume is also strong negative. Well, if I got all that negativity sort of you know hanging on in the market just after we make a high and we go sideways, well, chances are the market's going to drop, and it drops, it loses a quick five points very quickly. And again, you know, anytime you're coming into a low. You want to be looking for a reason to get long, right? Yeah, I, I just find it easier to buy lows if there's a reason to buy the low. I'm not trying to predict a low or pick a low. 
but if the market is coming back down testing a low then i start seeing signs in the delta you know the delta volume getting strong 45 percent 27 percent 31 percent and the deltas the final deltas also being cyan i know that the aggressive buyers are stepping up right they're coming into the market in force getting ready to buy and this market has this nice rally um you know this is this you know, what is this 77 90 78 bucks all the way you know quickly all the way up to 78 40 pulls back a little bit goes higher all the way up to the 60 area so that's how you know some of the newer developments that we've developed in order flow analysis now it's interesting because you know i see some other softwares have started to adapt what i'm teaching you here into their software but ironically they, they, they just put it in there but they don't even tell you how to use it which is kind of um you know pointless right i mean the, all the tools that we've put in our order flows trader software are the tools that i've used in trading tools that ways that i look at the order flow to help me analyze what's taking place in the market so the second thing that i want to talk about is using order flow to reveal hidden opportunities now traders can uncover hidden opportunities that would otherwise remain unnoticed by looking at the order flow so being able to read the order flow gives you a significant advantage as it's going to reveal what prices and volumes are being bought and sold by the major funds and commercial banks so knowing this is going to enable you to position yourself at the start of a large move before it becomes visible on the price chart. Now, order flow analysis also allows traders to detect smaller inconsistencies in the market before they become apparent on chart-based systems, you know, systems that only look at price. So by recognizing these discrepancies, trading strategies can be optimized and potentially create larger profits. When you're looking at a normal bar chart, really, what do you see? Well, you see the open, the high, the low, the close, and the relationship from the open to the close. You're seeing where price traded and you know people for de centuries you know candlesticks have been around since you know what 1600s as a form of charting you know i've always tried to decipher you know what the wicks mean and things like that and you know, for me it's really sort of missing the surface and and the way i like to describe it is it's like a race okay we all focus on the person out in front right the guy that crosses the finish line the, the first but it's a race with a lot of people right and where it's interesting is what's happening during the race you know not just who's in first but you know fifth six seven eight nine ten that jockeying for position because that's what's taking place in the market all day long when you're looking at a price chart you're just looking at you know where the leader is so to speak you know where's price going but you're not looking at how did it you know the way it the route it took to get there, you know, over other traders or, you know, over other competitors. And that's why I say, you know, it's not necessarily just about following the leader. It's about understanding what's taking place everywhere else in the race. You know, the, the race for third, the race for sixth, the race for eighth, you know, there's always people jockeying for position. And there's a lot of internal movement taking place by the institutional traders in the market right the big traders the traders that are going to move the market so one of the things that we developed last year or i think over a year ago that we put in the software but it's still very important and because it's, it's telling you you know hey this is where the institutional traders are active inside of the bar and you're going to look for this activity in the market and you know apply it with order flow so what we do we have this thing called order flow sequencing okay and really what it is there's bullish sequencing there's bearish sequencing it's when the market when a trader comes in and takes out subsequent higher bids in the you know or selling it down like through bids so market chart you know bid offer okay so say it's i don't know 21 bid for 50, 20 bid for 60, 19 bid for 100, um, 18 bid for 200, right? That's subsequent higher bids and a seller comes in and just wipes it all out. Okay, that, that's what we call sequencing. Just as the offers, if there's more and more offers on the way up at each price level, 
higher, there's more offer, next level, more offer than the previous level, so on, and a trader comes and takes it out, is, you know, what that's telling you, what the market is projecting to you, is that you have a big buyer, he doesn't care what's there in the market, he's clearing it all out, and you often see that happen in strong moves, it's a sign of strength in the market, so what we do is we color that section of the bar magenta so it's just very easy to see right i mean we try to make it as visual as possible so it's easier for traders to see and you know you can see here it takes out 28 takes out 115 119 121 139 you know more and more volume on the way down it's just clearing it out with impunity right and you see that often as the market's moving down so it's giving you a sign of strength in the market okay Here's another example Right, this is a five minute chart, right? Market looks like it's going sideways, but right, you had this drop here down to 21 and a half from 40s. But if you're watching what's happening up in here while it's going sideways, you see there's heavy selling taking place. There's traders coming in and just clearing out the order book that's got strong liquidity resting in the market. And if you know this, right, then you could take advantage of this move. Right? You don't want to be having seen the market drop from 38.44 down to you know 38.34 and think, oh, you know, now it's time for me to get short. No, you want to be getting short up here at 38.44 when it looks like the market is just going sideways. But by watching the order flow, you know that you have strong institutional selling taking place in the market, and then the market drops. Right, that that's the edge order flow is going to give you. And again, similar thing here, right? It looked like the market, you know, it hit that low, starting to go sideways. Some institutional selling taking place here, even here, and the market dropped a little bit. We didn't take off this low, but again, you know, the market dropped again from you know the 32 area down into the mid 20s. Gold, right? Same thing you're looking at in e minis, bonds, tens, fives, corn, wheat. You look at in other markets, gold, right? Markets going up. Right? I see strong institutional buying, right? That's these cyan zones. Obviously, I see the deltas as well. Then I hit the high of the day. Put the bar right off the high, because again, you're at the high of the day. So what's in your mind? What should you be thinking? What should you be focusing on? Is this going to be the high of the day? Or is the market going to react and sell off? Well, what happens? You hit the high of the day, next bar, as it opens, the strong aggressive selling comes in right up in here. You got bearish sequencing. That's why this is colored out. And the market drops. Okay. I mean, if you're trading this, where you place your stop is just on the other side of that sequencing, right? Just as if you're getting long on this bullish sequencing down here, right? You just place your stop below the sequencing. It's you know it's just trade what the market is is telling you. Crude oil, same thing, right? Market had this little move up, starting to go sideways. Now you're seeing the institutional trading coming in here, here, and then the market drops. Then it met institutional buying, market rallies, goes sideways. Institutional selling coming in here, market drops again. I mean, don't make trading more complicated than it needs to be. All right, just trade what the market is telling you, basically. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is market weakness. Okay, you know, everyone always said, you know, buy the dip, buy the dip, but you try to buy this dip and the market keeps dipping. All right, that, that's the problem with buying the dip is oftentimes there's still more dipping to take place. But what if there was a way that you can look at this sell off? and think, you know, hey, it's going sideways, rather than get long, you get short. Well, there is, right? It's by looking at the delta. Now, I know what some people are gonna say, say, Mike, you just explained, you know, the cyan colors here, okay? 32, 33, delta volume, strong, delta, cyan color, cyan. Yeah, I mean, up until this bar here, it's looking kind of bullish, right? I, I would be interested in buying that as well off of you know we've sort of come down in here we hit a swing low we're starting to go sideways i'm seeing some signs of buying but what i see here all of a sudden taking place is weakness
because remember for a market to move up in this case you need strong aggressive buying to take place the market's not going to go up on i mean it can go up in one bar it could have negative delta but it's not going to rally on bars of consecutive negative delta so you'll be looking at the delta to be stronger each bar or at least positive and sort of you know somewhere around it but what you're seeing here you came down and then you see some signs of positive delta 123 109 119 all of a sudden it's starting to decrease it's getting weaker 57 10 5 negative 2 negative 179 minus 200 that's what caused the market to sell off it didn't sell off for any other reason that there was no more aggressive buying so if you don't have the aggressive buying in the market who's going to take the market higher it's not going to just magically go up you need that buying so while these two bars in here looked bullish, you're not getting any more aggressive buying coming in. Yeah, you had that burst of aggressive buying, and sometimes that's enough to kickstart it to get it to go up. But now we're seeing it just sort of weaken in here. That aggressive buying has been removed from the market. It's done. That aggressive buying is done. And now you're seeing weakness take place in the market and the market sell off. So if you're trying to buy this dip, initially I thought it was potentially a, a nice dip to buy, but by paying attention to how the Delta was shaping up, the lack of aggressive buying, I'll say lack of aggressive buying taking place, but rather the, the lack of aggressive growth buying taking place, getting weaker instead of getting stronger, that's a negative sign. And the market, you know immediately drop 10 points but having software that could highlight that to you removes that form of analysis off your plate and just will highlight it to you that hey you know what there's weakness here in the market that so that you can if you were long you could recognize that and get out and get short basically as soon as you can rather than take a full stop out because the order flow is telling you hey you know what the conditions for this trade have changed so, like I said, trading is less stressful when you know which dips to buy, right? Market went up, pulls back, strong selling, right? You're seeing strong negative delta readings. But then even though you got the strong negative deltas, it's getting weaker and weaker, right? It went from, you know, minus, you know, at this high where it turned minus, 550, minus 588 delta to minus just one 58 to minus 171 to minus 159 to minus just 85 uh, then the aggressive buying pops in here and the market starts here. this is just this morning um you know it's 750 this morning to catch a nice you know five six point move here over 10 15 minutes bonds this morning right came down in here sort of you know almost a double bottom but as this market is selling off into this double bottom here, what's happened is the delta is weakening. That aggressive selling is getting weaker and weaker as the market is selling off. And so imagine, right, market is selling off, but buyers are just dropping off at the wayside. So instead of selling off and having more buyer, uh, sorry, more sellers coming in as the market is going down, which is what you wanna see for a market to go down, as the market is going down, the sellers are, are falling off. It's getting less sellers, each bar, less sellers, less sellers. And that's a sign of, you know, even though we call it market strength, it's really a sign of lack of aggressive selling, which in turn, you know, once that aggressive selling is gone, the market is going to sort of revert back to where it should be. And we actually rallied up from this level to new highs of the day. That was this morning in the bonds. Now I had to scrunch this chart. This was crude oil this morning, just a few hours ago. Well, more than a few hours ago, about four in the morning until about 5.30, okay? But here you got the weakness, sells off. Again, from, you know, we're talking 79, this is 79.60 in here, all the way down to 78.80 here, where you get the bullish signal, right? That, that selling was finally tapering off right selling was was over and then the market rallied again from you know the 79 bucks area up back up to 79.50 so you could have caught that move down and that move back up but let's dig a little bit deeper right this market this is that same chart this was the the first 
this is this area here okay market was sort of balancing in here and as you're coming out of balance the selling is just i sorry the the aggressive buying is just not present anymore and then the aggressive selling takes over and we immediately you know drop over a buck then after that big move down right this is here this bar right is this chart here after the big move down market shouting out at you i mean look at that big you know almost capitulation bar minus 544 delta then the next bar it drops down to just minus 43 delta and then minus 21 as the market starts reversing we're getting a bunch of buying imbalances taking place but once you know that hey you know what this selling is over because you know a lot of times people see a big negative delta and they get more bearish well okay you can get bearish off of the negative delta but you really got to watch what's happening after that is it still a strong negative delta taking place or is it gone is that selling been removed from the market and it has been right there's nobody else is, is interested in selling down here and then eventually the delta it turns positive and the market starts to rally so the last thing i talk about is leveraging the order flow to maximize trade results I mean, because yeah it's one thing to know order flow but then you got to start putting the pieces together right i've showed you several ways to use the order flow and at the end of the day you know you sort of got to put the pieces of the puzzle together and, and that's what separates good traders from um, break-even traders or even losing traders is being able to put the pieces together and understand you know what you're looking at and and take good trades so knowing how to leverage order flow might just be the edge that propels you from that average trader to a consistently successful one so by understanding relationship of order flow such as delta point of control and imbalances traders gain insight into the market so you got to start putting everything together okay this was this morning where you had this quick pop-up i mean obviously now we, we sold off um after this but you know there was a good four or five points to be had in this quick move here right this is these are those moves that you like to see as a trader right as soon as you get in boom straight to your take profit in a minute or two but what were the signs okay well this market was just sort of going sideways going nowhere sort of drifting down and you get that green bar here you get that nice delta number 209 okay people say what about this bar here well it's a red candle with positive delta and that means something else but now we're just sort of going sideways and i see a nice positive delta i see 209 delta max delta was 210 so it's closing almost right on its max delta i see the min delta was just minus three so i see no basically no aggressive selling i mean there was minus three contracts in there and more importantly i got one two three four five buying imbalances in here right for me that's an easy trade to take and you know you're getting long somewhere around 80 and it just moves up quickly to 85. Okay, this was a little bit earlier in the morning, right? Market looks like it's just sort of going sideways in here. And it was, right? From 5.30 to almost 5.40, it's just hanging around 92 to 94. And then it drops, right? It drops from, you know, the 92 area down all the way into the 72, a 20 point drop in, again, this is a one minute chart. So it's taking place in one, two, three, four minutes, 20 points. It's insane in the, in the way this market is what were the signs okay you got that big bar here right you got one two three four five six selling imbalances okay now i haven't spent much time on talking about imbalances that's one of the the basics of order flow most traders already know but if you're not really familiar with the buying or selling imbalances you know watch some of my videos on my youtube channel i i, I spent a lot of time um, talking about that the delta volume minus 25 so the final delta is minus 244, which is off of minus 259. So it's not within 95%. But I know the delta, the total delta volume going into the volume itself is over 25%, just barely, which is a strong negative reading. 
I know that I have no aggressive buying in this bar because I have a zero here. That's what the white highlights to me that, hey, you know what? It was zero. There was no aggressive buying. So what do I got? I got a market going sideways. I start seeing some aggressive selling taking place. Maybe I'm not convinced yet. Eh, maybe yeah, there's some selling. Maybe it's going to revert back up to this 94. Then obviously the next bar, big stack selling a balance. You got like 10 imbalances in this bar. This big stack selling a balance. Now the delta is magenta color. It's minus 683 versus 700 on the min delta. So I know that this bar is got strong selling in it. It's got three positive delta. It's white color. So it's telling you know, it's just highlighting to me that it's got a very small, small max delta. So it's telling me aggressive buyers never really had control of this bar. It's been dominated by aggressive selling. So even if you're getting short here at 84, a quick 10 points down to 74 in the next two minutes. Okay. That's how you know once you start putting it together, you can start to see you know how how what the market is telling you basically right that's all you got to do is just trade what the market is is telling you so here right market sold off starts going sideways starts catching a bid right starts trading up and what do you see on this move up three nice three green candles nice positive deltas closing right near our max deltas even this last one i've got bullish sequencing so i know more and more volumes are being taken out to the upside Again, this is five, oh, just before six o'clock in the morning. This morning, the delta volume 30 into 82, it's over it's over 25%. It's actually 36%. So I got a lot of bullish activity taking place at the swing low. You're getting long somewhere in here, you know, 79.20. This is 20 here. And it moves right up to 50. Again, within about 15 minutes. Again, you know, trade what you see, right? This are those these are those bars that you love as a trader, okay? Where it moves from you know 80, 90, all the way up to you know 80, 140, a 50 cent move in crude oil in one bar on a one minute chart. What are the signs? Well, you could see it in here, right? This market is just sort of going sideways. I got bullish sequencing here. I've got bullish delta, right? The cyan color, 79.88. It's closing near our max deltas. I see very small min deltas. I see a zero here. I see a minus one. I see the delta volumes. 33% of the volume is the positive delta. 35 is positive delta. 40 is positive delta, right? Obviously, I see more imbalances taking place in that part, but I've got a lot of bullish activity taking place just in this little spurt here that, yeah, okay, you get long and then boom, immediately just jumps up in the next bar goes parabolic and then you you these are those moves that it hits your take profit before you could even adjust it to a, a wider take profit based off of what you're seeing on the order flow and then you get some stopping volume here this is a very bearish bar you got heavy liquidity up here 241 um and then the market reacts to that right again this is a very bearish signal right here at 81.50 it's telling me there's stopping volume in the market that point of control up there and the volume and the market sells off from there so you could have caught this move up and you know some of this move back down now you know people traders get bored in sideways markets They're like ah oh, the market's boring but you know when you read the order flow that's where moves you understand that that's where moves happen from is, is when you see sideways activity in the market and you know you're starting off it's just sort of going sideways you get some nice bearish sequencing taking place here nice bearish delta and then market just continues to go sideways now it's starting to reverse so even if you're short off of this bar you re can recognize obviously it's gone sideways over the next three bars but now you're recognizing that the bullish order flow is coming in right you can see the bullish deltas you can see the bullish delta into volume over this bar this bar Obviously, you got a lot of buying imbalances. This is buns this morning. You got one, two, three here. You got one, two, three here. This bar's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buying imbalances in it. And again, the delta volume, 54%, that's quite high. And what happens? So even if you're short here, you could recognize that the order flow is changing in here. Cut your loss. That's that's how you cut your loss early. I don't want to say, you know, every single trade I'm showing you is, is going to be a winner. There's times where it looks like, yeah, you know what, this, this is bearish. You know, you get short, but it's all about 
controlling your losses. You got to cut it, right? Then you got to recognize that the order flow has turned bullish and you're getting long 134, you know, 25 or 20 down in here, anywhere in here. Actually, you could get long before this bar even starts. But, you know, we'll just call it here at 25 and it's a move all the way up to 50. So even though, you know, you get short here at 10, maybe you cover it around 15, 16, 17, it's 25 point move right after that. And a lot of those moves happen as the market is coming out of sideways activity. Now, this is something that gets lost on a lot of traders, especially when they use order flow especially software that's that hasn't been developed by me because they're not you know i don't like to say that i sell a software package because I, I provide a lot of education and a lot of live training you know weekly for users and when they, you see people say well okay you got bullish delta here right two right? and it's got a bullish delta volume 50 percent oh that's quite big well you also got to take it in context it's traded four contracts right this is at two in the morning this is bonds so there's four contracts traded and you know it's got a delta of two that doesn't mean it's bullish it's just you can't make a a good decision based off of that you know you, you want to see some decent volumes now the next bar yeah 170 is decent but when you get over here you're starting to see some more i'll say decent volumes but good ones you know 35 61 133 that you could base your decision off of just as here Again, maybe you got short off of these three bars here with the, the negative delta volume. I definitely wouldn't get long off of a bar that's got four contracts traded. He's got some more volume traded. Okay, maybe you get short here, but then you recognize it's going sideways. Okay, then you start to see some bullish thing. You cover it, or you even got a stacked imbalance here at 248 in the in the morning. You, you cover your trade, right? You get out, you don't wait for it to come back. All right, that's trading is being successful is about being able to manage your your risk you know and it's funny because you know if you I, I like to read trading biographies you know oh, I like to read biographies of just people and you know I spend a lot of time reading biographies of success, successful traders now there are you know you, you read market wizards okay that's a simple book to read in terms of biographies because there's a lot there and you know, while for many of those traders, there's there's usually like one big singular win that sort of propelled them from average trader to becoming a, a professional trader, being alive in the market for a long time. But after that one big win, then they start talking about managing risk, right? Once they got to that level. So it's not like big win after big win after big win after big win. A lot of it is the grind, right? The daily trading back and forth of cutting your losses short so that when the opportunity for that big win comes in, you're positioned, right? To take advantage of it. So say you get short in here and it's going sideways. Okay, you cut your loss when the bullish order flow comes in so that when the bullish order flow comes in, you're able to recognize it and capitalize it as opposed to still being married to that, that lousy trade. Okay, a context. Okay, put it all the trades in context. So this is minis this morning, micros rather, MES. Market rallied up, and you came up to a swing high. Now I got bearish sequencing coming in. I've got bearish deltas coming in, right? To me, that's a sign. I want to get short, right? I mean, even though here you got some bullish signs, you know, bullish delta, bullish delta. Okay. Market is kind of in a range. Maybe you could take it. You know, if you take it, it's got a little bit of a move. But once you recognize that we sort of break out to this new high and we start turning, recognizing the turn is taking place, uh, then you start seeing the negative deltas coming in. That's your sign to get short, right? It's not your sign that, oh, you know, maybe this is just a little pullback and I should get long. No, that's your sign to pile in and ride it out, right? And it drops, again, another quick 10 points this morning in the E-minis. There's a lot of 10, 20 point moves this morning in the E-minis. And this is the chart I showed you earlier, right? The market weakness in the sense of the aggressive selling, or sorry, the aggressive buying getting weak before the aggressive selling takes place. So imagine, right? Market is sort of drifting down. 
it's got some aggressive selling. The aggressive selling lightens up. Some aggressive buying does come in, but that aggressive buying has come in and it's just sort of dropping by the wayside. The aggressive buyers are are dropping off one by one. And then eventually there's no more aggressive buying and the market starts drifting down. But as it starts drifting down, aggressive sellers are piling in here. You can see the delta volumes, 40, what is that? 41, 56, 56. The deltas are closing on our knee right near our max, or sorry, our min delta numbers, which is bearish. And the max deltas are basically zero. You know, these three bars, no aggressive buyers. One, this one had a one. Zero max delta, zero max delta. But again, the, the early signs were in here that there was drying up aggressive buying. And this is a dip you can buy right market rallies it starts dipping okay the aggressive selling that you're seeing coming in here is drying up now you got some strength appearing that's what this line is telling you that hey you know what that aggressive selling that was there on this market dipping is gone right this is a dip you want to buy now i put this one in there because again you know sometimes it's confusing you know people like to throw different things on order flow up on the chart without really understanding, you know, should I have it on my chart or not? And where it gets confusing for some people is when they see a lot of buying and selling imbalances in every single bar, like this bar has got two selling imbalances. This bar has got three buying imbalances. This one's got two selling imbalances. This one's got six buying imbalances. Then it's followed by a bar with four selling imbalances, followed by a bar with two three buying imbalances and it's just confusing right because if you're trying to just trade imbalances you're like oh i got long i got short ah uh, you know then you want to throw your computer out the window but by watching what's happening as well in the deltas okay so you know you got a lot of back and forth actually you know buying no buy sell no buy sell but once you start seeing that directional trade wind down right in terms of the aggressive selling there's still aggressive selling taking place here but it's getting weaker and weaker right that's what this purple line is telling me now that's the time i could be taking the trade right off of the aggressive buying and the aggressive selling getting weakened and it starts working its way up nicely and again when you're looking at market strength or market weakness this is one of my favorite trades that's why i put the star here is when you put things in context, right, where should you be looking ideally for market strength or market weakness? Well, you want to be looking for when strength is appearing at or near a low, swing low or low of the day, or for weakness when the market makes a swing high or the high of the day, right? Because what I want to know is if this move going up, even though it's going up, right, which is, you know, what a lot of traders like to see a market going up. But if you're just looking at price, you just see price making a new high, making a new high, making a new high. But if by looking at things like the delta, I could see that, yeah, it's going up, but the aggressive buying is falling off. It's getting a little bit weaker as the market keeps going up. So that tells me that, you know, it's probably a good short opportunity. We're at a swing high. And as we're coming up into that high, that aggressive buying that was there to move it to a, a swing high is getting weaker. Because once that aggressive buying dries up, the market is probably just going to fall over. And it drops, again, really quick from 79.60 down to 79.10. It's a quick 50-cent move, right? That's this morning, just at 7.45 this morning in crude. So trading can be a daunting experience for many. But with the right set of knowledge and strategies, you can learn how to trade with order flow. And when you join orderflows.com, I'll show you some of my most valuable trading experiences to guide you and make sure that your efforts are optimally rewarded. So, you know, we've covered a lot of ground in the last 45, actually almost an hour today, minutes. Um, and you should know some of the ins and outs of order flow as to how to make smarter trading decisions. So if you're already using order flow and have some software, you know, you can take away what you learned today, but there's a way to make it a lot easier. And unfortunately, I can't cover everything in a quick training session like this because there's just so much more to learn about order flow trading. But I hope that now you can have a good understanding of the order flow basics, right? Things you should be looking for you know, in the coming year when you're trading with order flow.
so I've got something special for you guys, right? If you know you really want to take your 2023 to the next level in terms of trading and especially in terms of order flow analysis, and it's the order flows trader six. So if you ever felt like you're struggling to understand something, only to have it click into place and suddenly become easy, right? That's the power of understanding how something works. Once you understand the underlying principles, life becomes much easier, not only life, but trading. So take trading, for example. If you don't understand how the market works and what makes the markets move, it's gonna be very frustrating and confusing. So have you ever wished you could get inside the mind of professional traders and see what they're thinking? And with the order flows trader, you can do just that. You know, this groundbreaking software that takes the knowledge of order flow, my knowledge, right? The knowledge that I've gained over, you know, 20, almost now it's actually going on 30 years of market activity um, and put it into a software that is going to highlight it to you what you're going to see in the markets. Now, the big mistake many traders make is thinking that having the right software is all they need to be successful in trading. And this could not be further from the truth because if you don't know how to use the software, it's not going to do you any good. And like I said, you know, while I do have a software, the order flows trader six, I, I really don't like say I sell software. It's really about the education that comes with it, you know, because you could buy order flow software out there for actually there's free versions of software out there, footprints that you can use. But honestly, if you don't know what you're looking at, it's pointless, right? That's why I focus more on providing education on how to trade with the order flow. I want my students to be successful. And I know that starts with giving them the tools they need to understand the market. So once you have a solid foundation, then you can begin to place trades with confidence. And that's when the real success starts to happen. Now, this deal that I have is, is the order flows trader software six, but also I include the education part the order flow trading course, which I normally sell for 297. This is the original course on trading or order flow. Before I created this course, there was no courses on trading order flow. Uh, as far as using the footprint, you're gonna get it for free with my software. But not only that, you're gonna get access to my order flow inner circle video series. It's a series of 56 videos that I made on advanced order flow tricks, tips, and analysis. And you, you can't buy this separately. You can only get it when you buy my software. So what you're going to get is the order flows trader six software, which normally sells for eight ninety nine, the order flow trading course, which normally sells for two ninety seven, the uh, video series, which fifty six videos is normally sells for four ninety seven. When I did sell it, that's over sixteen hundred dollars, almost seventeen hundred dollars. But I realized, you know what, trading and learning how to trade from books and videos is one thing. It takes discipline and commitment. What I found very helpful to traders is live training where you can ask your own questions. You know, Mike, what does this mean? What do you think of this? What should I be looking here? And for the last three years, actually, this is going on four years now, 2023, I've been hosting live user training sessions each week where it's open for all users of the order flows trader six to join where I drive home what I see in the order flow for the past week. So you can, ask your questions about areas you may be struggling with in your analysis or markets. And right now in the archives, there's over 100, there's 193 episodes and it's free for all users to attend. Or if you can't attend, you can watch the replay in the archives. This is the archives. And you know some gurus out there want to charge you extra just to teach you how to use their software. I mean, that's ridiculous. You buy software, you should get some training on it right and i i don't like that and you know they i've seen them charge up to 200 dollars a month well you got you know once you buy our software then you got to join our trading room for an extra 200 dollars a month just so you know you can learn how to use it well what's the point of that so what i discussed today is just a sort of a small sample of the kinds of analysis that i talk about on a weekly basis now this week because of the holiday um there won't be a session tonight but you know it'll pick up again next week and you're going to go, I'll go into much more detail about, you know, all aspects of trading, not just order flow, but technical analysis, the fundamental analysis. I talk about, you know, the different strategies that I use, how to adapt them to changing market conditions, you know, because most importantly, you want to be, you want to make sure you're looking at what is current in the market in the sense of, you know, what's working now and much more. So if you're serious about trading, I highly recommend you get started now, right? Because you know it's 2023; it's a new year. 
So you'll learn more about order flow in the weekly sessions than you than you thought possible. And as a special bonus for Investors Expos, I'll give you access also to my order flow playbook where I have 10 additional order flow trade setups so you know what to look for in the order flow. Normally I sell this course for 297, but you're gonna get access to it for free. So what you're gonna get is the order flows trader six software, which is valued at 899, the trading course, which is valued at 297, the inner circle video series, which is valued at 497, the access to join in the order flow live weekly group trainings, which is valued at $200 a month, you get access to the order flow playbook, which is valued at 297. That's over 21, well, it's close to $2,200, the value of 2190. But just for a one time payment of 749, yeah, yeah, it sounds a bit, uh, you know, and you get a pre knife set. No, you know, I, I try to keep it affordable. You know, my programmer wants me to raise the price. I've been trying to say, you know, it's, it's I'd rather just get the information out there to people. Um, and, and keep it at 749, but you know, I've, I get a lot of pushback from others to raise the price. So, you know, get it while it's still 749. Just go to orderflows.com slash off6.html. I'll put the link there in the chat. And what again, there's no recurring monthly payments. You know, I've seen these softwares, I've, I've bought software where it's like, oh, it's you know, we're just going to charge you $99 a month, and then it's like forever. You even cancel your card or your card expires. Somehow they still charge you for that, like months afterwards. I, I hate that, and you know I, I don't. It's just a one-time payment. Now you will have to pay data fees, obviously, and any Ninja Trader fees because the Orderflows Trader Six runs on Ninja Trader. And all you do is just go to orderflows.com/six.html, scroll down this page. It's going to take you to this thing here where you can see what you're going to get. All right, again, normal. My guys, they my programmer wants me to raise the price to $9.99, but I'm, I'm still holding it at $7.49. You're going to get the software, the Order Flows Trader software, the trading course, the Inner Circle video series, access to the weekly live group trainings, access to the Order Flow playbook. Just click that button. It takes you to PayPal. PayPal processes your payment. I don't get your credit card. I don't want that information. PayPal handles it all. I do get notified. Now, do bear in mind, after you click... Um, through PayPal, it does take, it can take a few hours to get everything all set up because, you know, to get access to, you know, the trading courses and everything, you have to manually go in and set that up as well as create your license manually because this is not, it's not automatic, right? You're getting a lot of extra bonuses in here. So um, we're usually pretty quick on it, you know, usually within 30 minutes to an hour, but, you know, depending on, you know, we just had a holiday, so everyone was busy um, during the holiday, but Again, you know, just give it some time. Don't email me one minute afterwards saying that you haven't gotten it because it, it takes time to manually go in and give you access to all these special bonuses. So just get started now, right? Go to orderflows.com slash six dot HTML. Make sure you put the dot HTML. And it's just 749 to get started. Now, if you want my book, I wrote a book on trading order flow. It's 150 pages. You're not going to get an actual hardcover copy. You're going to get a digital download. Just go to orderflows.com slash book.html. It'll take you to this page. Enter your name and email. Hit submit. And it'll take you directly to the download page. So, again, you know, get started with the Orderflows Trader 6. You get a great deal. You just go to orderflows.com slash off6.html. And I'll see you guys on the inside. So again, you know, thanks for taking the time out. Again, it's January 3rd. It's just the third day, really the first business day of the new year. And I hope to see you guys, you know, on our weekly sessions. You know, so you guys can become better traders and improve your trading um, knowledge. So thanks, everyone, for taking the time out. And I'll see you guys on the inside. Bye-bye.